Good afternoon everyone, my name is Mark Howe, I'm the Dynamics GP Business Unit Director here at Advantage Business Systems uh, and I'm happy to announce that we've partnered with ImageTag to provide you, our clients, with a, a market leading document and business process management solution. It can be implemented in days and easy to use, the quick tag delivery document imaging is uh, content based retrieval and customized workflow routing, all in the name of providing efficiency in your organization. Uh, QuickTag is a fully embedded uh, product in Microsoft GP, so you can use it seamlessly for all your GP users, but also it works outside as a standalone solution for all of your non-GP users throughout the enterprise. ImageTag's years of experience creating comprehensive yet cost-effective solutions ensure that uh, QuickTag will deliver a fast value and uh, fast ROI and low cost of ownership. So, Without further ado, we're excited about our partnership with QuickTag to share with you this afternoon. Now, without further de delay, I'd like to introduce today's presenter and our ImageTag Senior Account Manager, Stuart Lutkowski. Stuart, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mark. Um, thank you very much. And then thank you, everyone, for uh, giving us this time this morning. Um, I hope um, I, I keep everyone going towards the end of your day out there. So what I thought we'd do today is, uh, you know, we've gone through our introductions, and I thought what we do is talk a bit about some of the pains that I've seen in talking to uh, customers before putting in QuickTag and QuickTag for Great Plains, uh, then talk a bit about ImageTag, and then really get right into a demo of showing you how our patented process gets paper documents into a digital format, and how our document management solution allows you to leverage our best-in-breed workflow and approval solution to make your lives easier. So, you know, when we talk when we talk about document management or paper capture, you know, a few years ago it was really around paper. So, when people thought about document management, they typically thought about how you're going to help me from being saved from a desk that looks like this. And um, you know, today in 2013, paper is not the only problem. We get a lot of emails, Word documents, all through the internet and email, and we want to need to manage those into our uh, into our ERP system like Great Plains. So some of us do look like this. They don't smile as much as this gentleman does on the screen, but they do smile. So we need to be able to address not just the paper documents, but also all the electronic documents. So you'll hear me inter using those terms interchangeably. We handle both uh, without a problem. So when we talk to uh, when I've been talking to customers and opportunities before they're putting in uh, quick tag, some of the things that come up quite often, some of the pains that they want to resolve, uh, resolve are typically they want to minimize the loss of accounts payable documents. Now, I am not um, suggesting that anyone on this call loses paper documents, right? We don't lose them, we misplace them. But we want to reduce that. We want to reduce all that manual labor in managing all those paper and electronic documents and trying to find them again. Want to be able to uh, get those documents not just in its own line of business solution, but also to be able to um, manage non-GP documents in a document repository, which is key to us. Uh, and of course, be able to search and retrieve paper, not just in payables, and I'm going to show you a demo today for payables, for example, but be able to search and retrieve and tag documents throughout the entire uh, Dynamics uh, GP uh, product line. And of course, being able to ensure for uh, a system that it helps with disaster recovery and business continuity planning. That's typically the type of issues that we address when we're talking to our customers. Over and above, they want to be more efficient and ensure that you know they have an audit trail regarding approvals and paper documents and such. So a little bit about ImageTag. Um, actually, ImageTag is located in Tempe, Arizona, founded in 1997. We actually have eight U.S. patents around our solution today. We were actually the first fully embedded GP capture solution back in 2004 and have gr driven uh, really grown since then. Today we have well over 700 customers and well over 300,000 users worldwide using our tools today. Now one thing that's quite interesting about uh, Quick Tag and our, and our relationship with our customers is we actually have over 98% customer retention with our uh, customers using uh, Quick Tag. Now I've been in the software space for uh, you know more years than I wish to think about, but about 20, 25 years now. 
and uh, or more more like 20 years. Let's not let's not go to 25 yet. Um, and then talking to uh, you know my CEO and our VP of services, you know, having a 98% customer retention rate is almost unheard of in the software space. And it's really a true testament, not only to our software, but um, to our people, to our support, our services, and our relationship with our partners like Advantage. So like most uh, companies, we have to show you a sampling of some of the organizations that are using our tools today. What you'll see on this slide over here is um, you, you'll notice that we're not vertical to any particular industry. Uh, you could be a Fortune 500 like Coca-Cola. You could be a 50-user GP or a 3-user GP. It's really where you have a paper burden. So uh, when, when, you're, uh, when you're looking down the line and, and want to see more about uh, Quick Tag and Quick Tag for Great Plains and you reach out to your Advantage uh, representative, um, you know, we, we could always set up reference calls at a business user level, implementation level, and support level uh, at your convenience. So like I said a bit earlier, um, documents are really just the tip of the iceberg. It's not just about the paper. We're going to show you today how we handle all those AP documents, really non-purchase order invoices. But keep it in the back of your head. Our solution could support HR, accounts receivable, uh, financial general ledger. doesn't really matter. We've actually taken a holistic approach to document management. We're going to show you today how we easily capture the documents. And then the, the holy grail, per se, is really bringing that all together in a true transactional content management system. So bridging the documents with your business process and bringing them into GP, all nicely tied together in a closed-loop system. So how do we do that? Well, first and foremost, we embed ourselves directly into GP. We're actually embedded today in over 70 screens, actually 73 screens, in Great Plains today. So you'll notice um, we're in POP and SOP and GL and payables management. One thing that's very interesting to note, a lot of times customers come up to us and say, you know, we've added a certain ISV solution to our uh, GP implementation that changes or adds a screen. Can you quick tag enable that screen? Well, that's not a problem. With our, our tool set, we're able to paper or quick tag enable a screen within, within hours. So you'll notice how we leverage during the demo the additional menu item which is in the uh, in GP, and we'll show that to you during the demo. But before we go into that, I do want to talk a little little bit about workflow. So if we define workflow today as business process management of documents, and when I mean documents, that could be electronic or paper, and being able to approve, reject, and delegate. Now, when I talk to customers before they put in Quick Tag, I typically ask the question. Uh, uh, you know, is what does your AP process look today like? And typically, this is what they tell me. It looks like a messy but of spaghetti all over the place. Now, I'm not suggesting, again, that this is your process, but if I show you a diagram of a typical AP process, it does look like a lot of spaghetti. You buy something, the vendor that you buy it from enters that code into the ERP, they print that invoice and mail it out to you. It's hand delivered to your office. Your AP uh, team manually enters the invoice. And then it does the mad dash. It actually gets to the photocopier over here. And then that's where then all the multiple copies of the invoice are went through, go throughout the organization. And that invoice runs across the organization to get approved, to get lost, to get coffee spilt on it. And finally, at the end of the day, it gets put back into the system and approved to be paid. Typically, according to AMR research, the elapsed time to manage a paper invoice is close to 35 days. So what we're trying to suggest today is we'll take this whole AP process and simply be able to take that business process management and do the work with you and for you within Quick Tech. Now, one thing to note, and I'm going to reiterate this during the demo, um, Quick Tag is not a customizable solution. Now, that's a good thing, guys, because customization means it's an integration project. And at the end of the day, we don't want to have to uh, work um, on a project that actually takes uh, days and uh, takes months and months and months to implement. We're a highly configurable system. So what I'm going to show you today is workflow routing, single-level routing, keeping in mind that we also support 
that multi-level business process management where you are basing your workflows and approvals on different spending thresholds, different indexers, departments, uh, vendors, et cetera, et cetera. So I just want you to keep in mind, we're going to demo the single level business process management workflow today, but of course with the configura configurability of QuickTag, we can support that multi-level. Now, um, when you guys want to do see that and are interested more in the solution, you just reach out to your Advantage team member and we'll set up a demo where we could show you that multi-level. So a lot of people say, okay, Stu, why, uh, why do people select QuickTag? Why do companies choose it? Well, first and foremost, it's a scalable document management system. Now, we're not going to show you today that uh, you can manage your own documents. What really QuickTag is by itself is a virtual filing room. It allows you to manage paper documents and give you insight into GP documents. So if you don't even use uh, the HR module of Great Plains, you could create drawers and cabinets within QuickTag to manage those documents, contracts. But we're also embedded in GP. And our solution has an easy capture methodology, which I'm going to show you today. And because we use a phased approach, there's a really low total cost of ownership. Now, what's great about our routing and approval solution is you don't require a Great Plains or a SharePoint license. It's a web-based solution, so you can approve from wherever you want. But more importantly, if you have an email or smartphone, you can approve right from there as well. So uh, what people like, again, about the solution is that it's up and running in days, can be phased and grow within your organization and be configured to your particular business processes. So a lot of people say, that's great, Stu. How do you get all those documents and emails and Word documents into QuickTag and then into Great Plains? Well, that's a very, very good question. Um, we, we were able to support multiple ways to get those documents in, from emails to scan first to web portals to paper documents that are coming into the organization. I'm going to actually show you today how we handle emails coming in, um, how we're able to hand paper documents and electronic documents. But keep it in the back of your mind, we can support a lot more than that. So people say, okay, Stu, that's great, but how do you get all those paper documents in? That's my biggest headache. Well, what's the secret sauce behind it? The secret sauce behind it is the quick tag label. On my desk, and there's a picture of that right there, you see the image tag quick tag label dispenser. Within that label dispenser is a role of globally unique and sequential quick tag labels. And on those quick tag labels, you'll notice right over there, there's a nine digit number and there's a barcode. That nine digit number and barcode is globally unique and sequential to the user that's logged into quick tag or the user that's logged into Great Plains. So what does that mean? It no, that means that QuickTag knows your next number because they're sequential and unique, but also GP knows your next number. That's all you've got to remember. So those tags actually act as document directors and document separators. So if I take the example of what my desk may look like in a regular situation, I would have a dispenser on my desk and paper document. Now, if I want to attach this paper document to a Great Plains transaction, I would just go into Great Plains, I would hit the additional byte, uh, menu item, and what would pop up on my screen is the actual quick tag, my next number in my dispenser. Because keep in mind, it knows my next number because I'm logged in as Stu, and these are globally unique and sequential. So I need to just visually inspect this number over here to match this number. I take the tag off, and I put it on the document. I just need one tag. It could be a multi-page document, but I put it on the lead sheet of this multi-page document. Now what's cool is I don't need to scan now. I could keep working in Great Plains, in QuickTag, in AP, in AR. When it's convenient, I go to any digital copier, any scanner, um, any, any fax device. I put all my documents in there, and they could be my documents, they could be Mark's documents, they could be Calais' documents, it doesn't matter. I scan all the documents at one time, they travel the network, they hit the QuickTag server, and QuickTag server sees the document and sees the barcode and associates it with the QuickTag, with the Great Plains transaction. Now, I'm going to show that to you live in the demo, but I wanted to give you a high level of that process. So what I think I should do now is stop yapping of what I'm going to show you and actually show you the solution. So I'm going to switch screens. 
And what, what you're going to see in front of you now is the actual Quick Tag Anywhere homepage. Um, I'm going to log in here um, as, uh, now I, I apologize, we're not the most creative people at Quick Tag. My username is Indexer. Um, so as you can imagine, that's what my job is going to be. I'm going to log in to this web application. And what you should see in front of you is my work queue. Now before I get into the work queue, I want to talk a bit about what QuickTag Anywhere looks like. In essence, what you're seeing here is QuickTag Anywhere, which is your document management system. It's your virtual filing room. So you'll notice on the side here, you see a bunch of folders. If I go to my library and I go into the Fabricam uh, cabinet, you'll notice all these different folders or drawers. And you'll notice all these drawers over here kind of replicate the names of the forms that you see in Great Plains. So every screen that you see in Great Plains, like apply receivables documents, you could add documents to. Right over here, all the way down to a payables transaction entry screen. So you'll notice if I go into this particular drawer, here are all the documents sitting in the payables transaction drawer. Again, I could see this in QuickTag because I have the appropriate security. Now this is just for GP, but if I wanted to, I could actually have my own cabinets. And you'll notice over here I have a Stu HR drawer, and these are just a drawer that I've created right within QuickTag because I want to manage some HR documents outside of Great Plains. Very easy to use. So what I'm going to do now is um, go out of QuickTag for a second and I'm going to go into Great Plains to show you our process. So let me go into Great Plains right now. And what you should see in front of you is something you're very familiar with, the Great Plains uh, solution. What I show you today is uh, T3, which supports uh, GP10 2010. And what you see to here, uh, Great Plains 2013. I'm going to do a transaction entry right over here. Um, I'm going to say that the description here is, uh, for example, we'll just saw, call it for a car. Um, I'm going to say, what vendor is it for? Again, you're all pretty used to this. I'll say it's for advanced office systems. I'll say it's for $2,000. Um, I'm going to pick a batch. I'll just pick the stew batch. Um, and I'm going to say the document number is ADV1. And I'll say the, sorry, uh, oops, sorry about that, ADV, uh, big fat fingers, ADV, let's do ADV3, and ADV3 over here. Now, what I want to do is attach a paper document to this particular transaction. Well, let me show you my screen. And uh, if anybody, I know it's later on in the day out there in the UK, don't be nervous when you see my face. I'm going to wave to you guys. What I have in front of me here is a one-page document that I want to attach to this Great Plains transaction. I also have my quick tag dispenser over here. And you should see it's a, it's a dispenser with a roll. And there is either pre-printed, and there's my numbers. So what I want to do is I want to attach this paper document to that transaction. I'm going to wave goodbye for a second, and I'm going to go over here. Now, all I have to do at this point is um, go to the additional menu item, and you'll notice I have the option to tag a document. Well, I'm going to bring that up over there. What you're going to see, it says tag document, and it shows me the number 221, and there's a comment line there. Now, I'm just going to say the comment is hi to Mark, because I feel like I should say hi to Mark. At this point, again, what I will do is pop up my screen. You'll notice over here my next number is 221. I take it. I put it anywhere on the sheet. Anywhere on this. This could be a multi-page document. I just put it on the middle over here. And at this point, all I need to do is hit OK. That's it. Now, when it's convenient, I will go to my copier. And I will keep, you know, I'll keep stat tagging these documents. When it's convenient, I go to my copier, and I have a copier right here. It's a bit old, but it doesn't matter. Any, any copier that's been around for at least 9, 10 years will work with our solution, as long as you could scan to email or scan to FTP or scan to file share. I will put my document here. Now, keep in mind, it could be my document, Mark's documents, Calais's document. doesn't matter. I'll just go over here. I'm going to select Quick Tag. It's going to bring the document through. You could probably hear it. It's quite noisy because they didn't give me a nice cause scanner for this remote office. By the way, our head office in, in Arizona, I'm in Montreal, so um, part of the colonies there. So what's actually happening is that document went through the scanner. It's actually traveling the internet to the QuickTag server, uh, in my case, in Arizona. In your case, it would be sitting in your office 
if you're hosted, it would be sitting in your hosting facility, and it's traveling the network, hitting the QuickTag server. QuickTag server sees the barcode, reads the barcode, and associates it with the, with the GP transaction we just did. That simple. So those document, uh, those QuickTag labels have two very important functions. One, they tell the document where to go on the QuickTag server, but two, they also act as document separators. So that means I can put as many documents as I want for as many transactions, for as many pages, for as many people all at once, making it very efficient for high volume multiple page transactions. That's it. I'm going to wave goodbye. I'm going to go back over here. Now a lot of people say, hey, Stu, that's great, but what about all the emails I get? You know, because now I get a lot of my invoices by email. I want to attach the email with the attachment to the transaction. Well, we've thought of that. I'm going to go to additional, tag documents. That same pop-up comes up. I'm going to say this is an email from Mark. Now I'm just going to go to Outlook over here. I'm going to make it a bit smaller. You'll notice there's an email that says, uh, Stu Demo, here's your invoice, and there's actually a document attached there. I just need to drag this right over here. I'm just dragging it around. I'm going to dump it right in the middle. It's going to say, hey, Stu, are you sure you want to attach this email and uh, attachment to this transaction? Yes, I do, and it's now been attached. Even if you delete the email from your, uh, the email with the attachment from Outlook, it's still available in QuickTag. Now, we could do the same thing with regular, regular Word documents. I can go right to a, a file browser. I can hit Tag Document, um, and I'll say from my desktop, and I'll just go over here. I'll open up this window, window browser. I'll go to my desktop over here. I have some sample documents on my desktop, and I'll just go to Invoices, and I'll just pick one right over here. It's going to say, do you sure you want to attach it? Well, yes, I do. Now, you'll notice, I'm not going to hit yes yet, you'll notice when I did the email, it did not increment my increment over there. It's still a 222. If you remember before, my last number was 221. It does not waste them on electronic documents. You only need it for paper documents. I'll hit yes, and that's it. And I can keep working, again, in Great Plains payables, in receivables. It doesn't really matter, in POP and SOP. Uh, when it's convenient, what we actually do is we leverage the search functionality of Great Plains to search for transactions and paper documents or electronic documents that are associated with them. So I can just go to Additional, and you'll notice now what I can do is go to View Documents. When I go to View Documents, now you're going to see my PDF that I scanned in, hi to Mark my email to Mark, and the Word document I brought in. If I want to see that one-page document, I'll open it up, and there's that one-page document with the barcode 221 on it. From here, I can print it. I can do whatever I want. In terms of the email, if I double-click on that email, it actually opens up the email, and there's the actual Word document, a PDF document attached. Now, if you have people that are not on your system, you can actually go right over here and if you wanted to, you could select them all, and you could actually email them to people that are not part of your, uh, your, uh, your infrastructure. Now, could you imagine how great that is? You never have to print a piece of paper again. So what I want to show this here is how you attach those paper documents to Great Plains and how you could search for them and view them, and et cetera, et cetera. Now, what I'm going to show you now is how we actually take that functionality. Now, I showed you how easy it is to get paper documents in. Now what we want to do is implement or show you how we leverage our workflow and approval process to be able to leverage, uh, be, view that closed loop system. So I'm going to go back into my browser. Um, you'll notice I'm still logged in as an indexer over here. Um, and I'm actually now in an area here called the work queue. Now what's the work queue? I'll give you the example of what this process is. Sitting at reception, um, the, the person at reception would receive invoices. He or she would just scan them in, and based on the type of the, uh, if it's an invoice, they would go directly to me, my, my work queue. So you'll notice over here, in my work queue, I have nine items. I have nine items up here that I have to address today, that I have to work. Um, I'm just going to actually right-click on this, and I'm going to give me a preview of each of the documents. So it'll, you'll notice over here, there is a document. Um, for advanced office systems, and it needs me to do something with it. It, ha it has a business process around it. So um, I have a workflow um, set of workflows over here. Um, now keep in mind, 
It's a highly configurable system. In our demo environment, we have a lot of different workflows here. I'm going to focus today on non-PO standard uh, one-level um, approvals. When I hit of invoices over here, what you're going to see in front of you now is a list of indexes that me, the indexer, needs to complete to, to let the workflow keep going. So first and foremost, it's going to say, OK, Stu, which company is this for? Because we support multiple companies, um, I'm going to select Fabricam. Now, if you just have a single company, you wouldn't have that index there. It would put it automatically. It's going to take today's date by default, but you could change that. The document number, well, that's typically like the PO number or the uh, invoice number. I'm not going to use the invoice number of WS4567 because I've used that about 100 times. So I'm going to say it's for ADV, for Advantage, and we're going to say 9 for this particular example. So ADV 9 is the document number. What's the amount? $1,500. I'm going to go over here, $1,500. Now, what's the vendor ID? Well, if I didn't know the exact vendor ID number, You'll notice there's a magnifying glass being completely integrated into Great Plains. This shows me all the vendors I have access to. I can actually just type on over here and type Advanced Office Systems, and I could select it. And you'll see here now it pulls in the vendor ID from the name I've brought in there. Now it's asking me because of my workflow, because of the, what I've defined as a uh, requirement for an indexer, it wants me to put in the GL distribution. Now keep in mind, you may say, well, Stu, I don't want my indexer to do that. I want them to put in the document number, select the vendor, and when they submit it, I want the department manager to put in the GL distribution. Totally configurable. We can do that, but I wanted to show you all in one process. I could just click over here, and it's going to show me the default GL accounts that I have selected for this vendor. These are the accounts that have been set up in GP. Now if I want to make changes to this, I can go to View All. I could search, let's say it's for freight, I could change it. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm just going to hit cancel, and I'm going to say, you know what, I'm, I'm fine with this GL distribution, and it's going to say the two codes were selected. I'm going to say, uh, this is for Mark's chair, because Mark wants a new chair. Now at this point, all I need to do is hit submit. When I hit submit, my work queue is going to go down from 9 to 8. And you'll notice now when I hit submit, that work queue goes down now. I have eight things i got to work on. So when I hit submit, the workflow started working. Now based on vendor number, the purchase threat and the dollar threshold, the GL distribution, certain rules will apply, and it will go to a person to approve it, which we call in our demo environment, as you can imagine in the creativity that we are, an approver. So I'm logged in over here as an approver. And what's actually happening is um, I should be getting an email in about 10 seconds that tells me that I have a uh, transaction to approve. So what I'm going to do is go over here um, to, um, I'm going to refresh this screen. And what you should see in front of you now is I actually have this particular um, transaction here for Mark. Now you'll notice on the bottom I did get an email. I'm going to go to my emails over here, and I have a brand new email from the Quick Tag Approval Engine that says, "Hey, uh, Stu, you have a, a transaction that needs to be approved for Fabricam. The document number is ADV9 uh, for $1,500 for Advanced System Office Systems. The GL account codes are here. It's for Mark's chair. If you want to see a copy of the actual PDF, you can double click on it." And I could do that right there. And if I want to, the cool part, I could approve or reject this directly from an email. I don't even have to log in to the Quick Tag interface. Now we've taken that a step further. I'm going to call my camera up again. And um, what you're going to see, and I'm going to show you, is a typical um, a phone. A smartphone, this is actually an iPhone, but it will support both um, you know, iPhones, Blackberries, as well as the Windows phones. And I got that same email right over here. It says, hey, well, we want you to approve this document um, for, uh, for Mark for $1,500. And if I want to see the actual document, um, I could just go over here, click on it, 
and there's the copy of the actual document, and I can approve it right from my smartphone. So really making your job easier, specifically based on specific rules, if it's a VP that needs to approve it, you don't want to have to have her go into a website. They could do that right from their smartphone. But for this particular example, I'm actually going to approve it right from the actual QuickTag interface. So I'm now in the QuickTag interface over here, and I'm saying, okay, uh, here's the invoice. Uh, it's for $1,500. That's fine. Advance. You know what? Um, I know the, the workflow is coming to me, but you know, Mark doesn't work for me. He actually works for someone else. That person should approve it because I don't see, uh, I, I shouldn't really approve this. So I'm going to delegate this to someone else to approve. So our solution allows for delegation and proxy delegation, so you don't have to worry about that. I'm not actually going to delegate it. I'm going to be the good, uh, you know, follow the rules. And all I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to hit approve. And you'll notice when I hit approve, this number four goes down to number three. I'm just working down my work queue. Now I'm done. Now this was a single level approval, pretty simple. So what, what happened was the document came in, scanned by a reception person then based on the work queue, came to an indexer, indexer indexed the document, and then based on either a document, uh, the vendor ID, a spending threshold, GL distribution, a set of rules came into place, and it came to an approver to approve. So now I approved it, and now what we want to do is go right into GP and have the transaction created. Now, we have two options in uh, Dynamics, a quick tag for Dynamics GP. We have something called STP, called Straight Through Processing, which allows the actual quick tag solution to create the voucher and the invoice. 95% of our customers or our CFOs that are using the tool initially say, whoa, 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 whoa. We don't want you guys to create the transaction right away. We want a holding queue within Great Plains, and we want to review it first, <coughs> and then we'll create the actual transaction autom automatically. We want that one last check. We could do that where we found with our customers after about a month of using the tool, they want to do the straight through processing and we just flip a switch. For this particular demo, I'm going to show you the, the work queue just to show you what it looks like within Great Plains. So I'm going to switch back into Great Plains over here, into Dynamics, sorry, I still call it Great Plains. And I'm still back in this transaction queue over in this transaction, which is fine. I'm going to go to additional. I'm going to go to view work queue over here. And when I do that, it's going to show me a list of actual documents that I've brought in that need to be set up in Great Plains. Now, look at that. There's my ADV9 for advanced. Now, if I want to, I could right click on that and I could view the document. Let's do that. Again, there's my document. But I'm fine with that. What I want to do is create a voucher and a, and, and, uh, and a batch. So I just go over here to create. It's going to say, OK, Stu, do you want to, do you want to create a new voucher uh, and batch for this, it's a, a new batch for this? I'm going to say no. Let's add it to the old Stu batch there that I like using. I'm going to hit yes. And then the document leaves my queue. And now it's created a transaction in the Stu batch, a voucher in the Stu batch. Now, I guess everyone's saying, ask yes, to prove it. Well, I'll go over here. I'm going to actually look, look up the document. I'm going to do it nice and easy this way. Um, I'm going to say, show me all the documents um, that have the document number ADV9, the one we used earlier. And there's my batch ID, Stu. It created a voucher for advance. I'm going to select that. And I'm going to hit save there for the last transaction. Sorry about that. And there's my invoice um, for Mark's chair, ADV9 for the document number. And if I want to, let's view the document. And there's my document. It's created the transaction and attached the associated images, work documents, whatever I want, directly within uh, QuickTag and Great Plains. Very simple. So I show, I'm going to show that complete process. Document came in. It was scanned to someone to index it within, Great Plain, within QuickTag. I don't need a Great Plains license for that. It was approved by somebody. Don't need a license for Great Plains for that. Then it was brought into Great Plains, and I created the transaction. 
So now that's great. Now what's the next the last step, the last step in a process that we typically look at when we're looking at uh, a uh, payables transaction? Well, we got the document in, we have to pay it. Now most customers, um, what they've seen is, you know, what ends up happening is you, you, you print this check edit report and you have a bunch of stack of signed documents and approvals that uh, are approved by the final signing authority. That could be the CFO, the treasury person, it doesn't really matter. Well, I'm going to go back here, again, back into QuickTag. Now I'm going to go into another tab here, and you'll notice I am now logged in as a CFO. I am now the Quick. I am the CFO, and what you should see in front of you is that really ugly computer check edit list. Um, that's the report that comes right out by default from uh, Great Plains that everybody knows. So there's a check edit list here for sixteen thousand dollars, and look over here. I'm paying these two vouchers. So as a CFO, I'd like to see the details of these two vouchers. What's making up this uh, thirty-eight, thirty-four, ninety-eight, and eleven fifty? Well, all I have to do at this point is right-click over here, and I have something here called associations. I'm going to say show associations. It's going to show me a list of all the vouchers that make up this check edit, and there, there they are. There's voucher number 200 and voucher number 356, and there's the purchase amount. If I want to see what images make up the 3,498, I just right-click. And I can hit View Document, and it's going to go into QuickTag. It's going to bring up the document with all the associated indexes associated with it. And you should see that in front of you right now. So it's going to show me this particular transaction with the indexes right here on the, on the left. Really simple. Now you may say, as, as, a, as a CFO, you want to make sure that you know, everyone who did approve it were the right people. Well, right from here also, I could right-click and I could see the workflow history uh, with this particular transaction. Now, again, we don't use the best terms here, but on 9-6-2012, it was tagged or scanned by an approver. Then on 9-6-2012 at 5 p.m., it was approved by an approver. Now, in your instance, this would say Mark or Calais or whatever it may be. At this point, all the CFO has to do is hit Approve, and the check gets printed that simple. So I just did a complete closed loop from you, from a document coming in, being indexed, being approved, invoice being, and check being printed. Now a lot of people say sometimes, what if I don't have access to Great Plains and I want to search documents? Well, part of QuickTag Anywhere is the QuickTag Global Search. It allows us to search all the documents and all the cabinets that we have rights to. Now I could either search by index, or if I wanted to, I could actually search by the document content. We do do OCR in our tool, so if you don't remember how it was indexed, but you do remember somewhere on the document was the word phones, I could go over here and type phones. It's going to search across all the documents I have access to for the word phone in it. I'll just pick this one over here because I do a lot of demos, and what you should see in front of you is the actual uh, document, and then highlighted in blue is the word phones. It's that simple. But if I wanted to just actually look on document filing information, and I wanted to look up ADV9, I could do that as well. And there's the document I scanned in today. And it's because I have rights to this particular drawer. If I didn't have rights to this particular drawer, I wouldn't even be able to see this document come up. And there's the document that I scanned into, uh, that we worked on today. So that actually is what um, everyone, what I wanted to show you guys today. So keep in mind, um, you know, prior to putting in QuickTag, a lot of companies felt that their AP process was like this. It was just a lot of spaghetti. Once they, you know, get the system implemented within weeks, their life becomes this, and they're just happy children. So I thought what I do now um, is, um, you know, that's what I wanted to show today, and open up the Q and A. Uh, Kalei, are there any questions? Perfect. We do have a few questions in the queue, and as a reminder, if you do have a question, uh, feel free to type that into the chat box. 
Uh, so our first question is, is this strictly an AP solution, or can it be used in other areas of my organization? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I feel like I didn't do a good job of explaining that. So, so first and foremost, it, it is a solution not just for AP. I showed you how uh, it's embedded in AP today. As I mentioned a bit earlier, we're actually embedded in over 30, uh, in over 70 screens. So in HR, in receivables, in purchase order processing, in sales order processing. So we're embedded throughout GP, so not only AP, but more importantly, with Quick Tag Anywhere, that uh, web-based solution, you can manage non-GP documents. Those could be leases, properties, contracts, HR documents. So it's a true platform uh, to manage paper and electronic documents with a direct embedded solution to GP payables and uh, receivables and SOP and POP. Perfect. The other question I'm showing is, will there be a change in system performance with all of the documents being entered into GP? That's, that's actually a, a very good question. I'd love to ask that question. So a lot of other solutions on the market today, um, how they develop the tool, they put a big burden on GP, not just uh, on the document content and putting the images in the uh, SQL database, but they also do a lot of back and forth uh, communication with GP. Our images sit in, the, in, a quick, in our QuickTag repository. So really, you could have 500 images or 50,000 images it makes no difference in the performance of QuickTag. It's just a call, and all that work is done by the QuickTag server, which is optimized for high volume multiple documents. I guess so, uh, Mark, any, anything from you? Do you have any, any comments or questions to, follow, to close up? Uh, no, that, that was great. Thank you very much, Stuart. Um, for those attending, um, we do have, uh, well, we have recorded this session so that uh, if you wish to share this with your colleagues, um, we intend to put this on our website um, and we'll let you know the contact details for that in the future. Um, we also do have um, a fact form that we can send out as well that uh, provides some information about the windows and forms that uh, come as standard. Uh, as Stuart mentioned, over 75 um, that come as standard with uh, Dynamics GP. Um, so we can share that with you as well.